So the moral of this story is to stay out of bogs at all costs. Moloch is a new Dutch atmospheric horror on Shudder. It's dark and unsettling, but is it worth the time? Beatrix lives at the edge of a peat bog in the north of the Netherlands. When she and her family are attacked by a random stranger one night, Beatrix sets out to find an explanation. The more she digs, the more she becomes convinced that she is being hunted by something ancient. This is a patient and quieter horror. What's a wonderful atmosphere this created? And because the setting is a remote home surrounded by forests and bogs, the environment is prone to fog and mist, and there's not any light pollution around. So when the sun sets, it gets incredibly dark. And there are many nighttime scenes where the camera will either be focused out into the night from the safety of Beatrix's home, or it's going to be out in the forest to make us squint and stare off into the darkness, just straining to make out any possible shapes and movements. And even inside the home, the warm yellow lights are offset by some red lamps, which then bathe the actors in this blood-like hue. Folklore and pagan rituals play a massive part in the storyline, and as intriguing as it is, and then even horrifying at the thought of the full ramifications of the rituals, it took me more than a few beats to really have the concept sink in. This story lays it out for us, at least as far as the mythology goes, but when all the crap hits the fan, we're left to do the thinking and put those pieces together. And that was actually the easier part for me. I mean, it was the way that the lore was being retold to us that was harder for me to grasp for whatever reason. And the ideas this story uses as its backbone are truly messed up. Moloch is an ancient god, but not really one that's kind and benevolent. Moloch is the god of child sacrifice. So yeah, that's automatically dark. And for this movie, while kids are used in some of the illustrations to explain the lore, children aren't the target, which to me was a relief. Now, there are a few main characters in this, and the actors work to craft personas that lie a bit in the gray areas of charisma. Beatrix, our main character, is protective and caring, but also hugely damaged from some trauma in her past. Jonas, an archaeologist or maybe an anthropologist who's at the bog to try and find bog people, is inquisitive and seemingly supportive, but he's timid as well. Beatrix's mom and dad also play a role, and they're funny, but not in a laugh-out-loud type of way. I mean, they're quirky and a bit eccentric, which then leads them to be a bit off in spots. And Beatrix also has a daughter, Hannah, who is young and sweet, but mainly is present just to serve as the driver for Beatrix's protective instincts. Plus, you know, a kid is an easy way to convey innocence and vulnerability. So I said that this is a quiet horror, and there aren't many things that cause us to jump. But there are some, just not a ton. And more so, the anxiety and the unease come from the way that the camera just looks off into the darkness, and then it's coupled with an unsettling score and that lighting that I had talked about. Plus, there are several times when visuals, they're just wrong. I mean, making us just want to retreat because of something or someone patiently coming our way. This is an hour and 39 minutes, and I think it uses the time efficiently. But because this employs quiet storytelling, you could feel the time go by in small parts. That doesn't mean the content isn't compelling, but just without big action and then sequences that are darkly lit, it makes for a more patient narrative. I think the story wants us to care about some of the side characters, or at least be concerned for their outcomes, but just about everybody in this, outside of the few mains that I had listed, they're strangers. Jonas has a pretty large team, but we don't get any insight or background on them. Also, the reason the team is at the bog in the first place is thinly explained. I mean, they're looking for people buried in the bog, which, thanks to the news, we now know is an actual thing. But it doesn't feel very exciting due to the lack of focus that most of that art gets. Small pieces are incredibly important to the story, but in reality, it's just the MacGuffin. The same goes for the townsfolk. If anything were to harm or threaten them, eh, I mean, I'm not really invested or concerned. But I do care if they all of a sudden show up in a dark room uninvited. At that point, mm, they need to go. There's a sequence in this that reminded me of the cosmic horror movie, The Void. Now, while I wouldn't classify this as cosmic horror at all, there's a scene that involves a bunch of people and their placements within the setting look like it could have been from The Void. And while this isn't a cosmic horror, one aspect of those types of stories is the futility of actions, where the outcomes will be the same no matter what the characters do or how nobly they fight. While these can make for uneasy watching experiences, they can also be frustrating because we know our characters are going to lose regardless. That worry was present in my head as I watched this, because we're dealing with the supernatural belief where previous followers did some gnarly things and it still turned out bad. But with that, it can add a very creepy layer to the narrative, creating dread within the nervousness. Now, I think the ending has the potential to either frustrate you or make you lean back and say, oh crap. I mean, I really do hope it's the latter.
So overall, Moloch is a dark and grim horror that is patiently and quietly told. The inclusion of ancient pagan beliefs adds a level of realism that is even more unsettling. The use of darkness and warm lighting help to create an ominous atmosphere that puts us on edge. And while most of the characters outside of our mains are complete strangers, the handful of main players are effective in showcasing some damaged and conflicted souls. The storytelling feels a little convoluted at times, making certain plot points more difficult to connect with. But by the end, the story does connect in a good and understandable way. Ultimately, I had fun with this and was creeped out. I loved how the camera would point off into the dark woods and I'd be straining to see something, if something was even there. But we're not always teased either. I mean, there are payoffs in this that raise the hair on my arms. Plus the ending, ah, it's just messed up enough to stick with me for just a bit, which I appreciate. There's sex, no nudity because it is creatively hidden, a little bit of profanity, and a bunch of violence. I give Moloch Three and a half out of five couches. What's a good atmospheric horror that you enjoy? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.